Hello, everyone. You enjoying yourselves? Delightful. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story about one of the many jobs I worked when I first started doing comedy about 11 years ago. I took a job at a uh, driving around strippers and escorts at night. And for a few reasons, it was a couple of bucks. I was a fat, unattractive kid who thought I could see some pussy and get paid for it, which was pretty sweet in my head. I didn't really factor in the danger part of it, but... <laughs> Ironically, that same company that by night you would call to get all your prostitution needs covered, by day, same phone number as what you would call to get, like, a character sent to your kid's birthday party, like a Big Bird or some shit like that. Same fucking number. I guess like five o'clock there was like a turnover. It's like balloons and dreams, or like skanks and cum dumpsters or whatever the fuck. I don't know, there was some alliteration. <laughs> and he would call me for both jobs. He would send me out as a character at fucking kids' parties. And I was the last guy on the roster, so I would always get sent to like the scariest, most ghetto parties. Which made it like 10 times scarier than it could have ever possibly have been already dressed like a character at a kid's party. So I remember one I go to is uh, North Philadelphia. I walk in there, I'm a very white in a very not white house, let's just say. <laughs> There's, there's, two, there's kids there, but it's only two, and they're babies eating Cheerios and height chairs. That's who I'm there to entertain, by the way. Everything else, no furniture, and just guys in do-rags, like, playing dice and smoking blunts and, like, drinking 40s and shit. So I'm terrified. And I walk in, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be uh, Winnie the Pooh for your kid. And he goes, oh, yeah, motherfucker. goes, where's your fucking uh, balloons and gifts? I was like, what? He goes, yo, motherfucker, you were supposed to bring balloons and gifts, motherfucker. By the way, he said motherfucker, like, sir, yes, sir. Like, motherfucker, you supposed to bring shit, motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't bring balloons and gifts. He goes, that's not what I heard. Now there's going to be a problem. I was like, oh, God, I don't want a problem. I'm just holding a trash bag full of Winnie the Pooh costume. I just want to make my 50 bucks. And I go, can you just call my boss? Maybe he could fix it. He goes, the boss is a scumbag. He runs a hooker company and a kid's party place. So he's not a very honest guy. And he'll say anything, I guess, just to get people to buy the service. So he said I was bringing balloons and gifts, but didn't tell me and sent me to the hostile waters of, like, a fucking menace to society party. So I'm fucking... Like someone's getting beat with a phone book or something at the end of the... So they go, uh, they're like, yeah. He goes, uh, it's all fine now. They took some money off the price. He goes, go change upstairs. <laughs> so I go upstairs and I close the door of the bedroom. And this guy goes, motherfucker, don't close that door, motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, I already did. And he goes, motherfucker. <laughs> Something's wrong with the door. It's broke. And if you close it, it won't open again. <laughs> 45 minutes, they're taking this thing off the hinges. And I'm getting half-dressed. And I'm not everything but the head. I'm just in my Winnie the Pooh costume. And I remember how hilarious the scene must look when they broke the, the hinges off. It's like an old shitty Philly house, and the door just slams, and the dust kicks up. And as the dust settles, you just see a guy dressed like Winnie the Pooh, like, looking majestic while I hold the head, like an astronaut's helmet. I'm like, let's do this, boys. Let's go make history. <laughs> so. <laughs>